Hello, Happy New Year. Welcome to uh, another semester, more statistics, mathematics, quantitation, abstraction, and more fun. Uh, this presentation will be an introduction to the STAT 1013 course. I'll try to keep it as short as possible. And uh, you'll be introduced to what I'm calling the research alphabet. I started with two Fs, two Fs, one F, four Cs, two Is, and I added a bunch of other letters, so I stopped. Um, I didn't keep track, actually, anymore. Um, and so let's, uh, let's get into it right away. So first of all, informal, intuitive reasoning doesn't always work. I'll let you read this yourselves. The point of the story is, if they make sense in your head, but you cannot actually articulate them, then maybe they don't make sense in your head. And I know as a teacher, I've been asked questions every once in a while, and I am trying to answer, and I'm like, I don't really understand this, so I need to take this away and think about it before I can give a good response. And that's a really important aspect of our thinking and our culture right now when a lot of things are questioned um, and people believe things without evidence or without being able to articulate actually what is what their belief is and what the foundation of it is. Three F's and a PH, a couple of PH's. Phenomena are all around us. Phenomena are that which appears. So whether it's the Northern Lights, which most of us have never seen, uh, we've accepted in photographs or videos or things like nose rings, mullets, what else did I put in here? Uh, Black Lives Matter is a phenomena, the protests and ticks moving north. So those are all different aspects of our lives. Some are in the social sphere, some are in the um, more physical Sphere, but they affect our social lives. COVID is another one I could have put in there. Um, those are phenomena, things that we notice, things that we study. And so formal research is interested in studying those. And formalizing is to give something shape. So we had informal reasoning. So this notion of intuitive, it feels right. And we uh, like to go with that. But um, at times, it's really important that we do that. And then at other times it just doesn't work. So feeling a mask, wearing a mask just feels wrong, but it seems like it's the right thing to do right now. And then formulating. So formalizing is to give something shape. So our educational system gives shape to teaching and learning or attempts to do that. And it's not always successful, but uh, that is what uh, its goal is. To formulate basically means to put into a formula of some sort, and that's the notion of abstraction. Uh, I wrote a something really smart here that I got to read, I think. When we give shape to a phenomenon and do that in the context of a community, so together we build, well, the education system has been built over years and years and years of communities doing this, uh, we formalize it. Democracy and education are similar. They're nice ideas and exist informally in our minds, but they become formalized in the systems within which we're living. Uh, they've been formalized differently in different cultures, that's true. Uh, and some of those cultures, the way they do education or the way we education, may seem wrong and may be wrong, in fact. Um, the same way with democracy. Um, how we choose our leaders, uh, how we give power to others. But we're not going to be focusing on that as much, although those are really, really interesting questions. Um, we're going to be focusing more on quantification and going back to mathematics, the course that you did last semester. Um, mathematics is a discipline that's most associated with formulas and giving form to our ideas. It's been the most successful. So whether it's in physics, whether it's in biology, whether it's in chemistry, mathematics stands, it's the way we formalize our thoughts and ideas and we present them and represent them. 
Um, few of us get the chance to uh, do the formulation. We study the formulations or the formal systems that have been that have been made before. So, if we're studying the education system, we study that. If we study, um, which we're doing now, statistics, we're studying the formalized system of making sense of the world that has been done by other people using mathematics. So the research process wheel, which is really, really important um, uh, and which you'll be following this semester. You have a research idea, follow it with a lit review because you want to learn if you want to formalize and see how other people have formalized that idea. And then we start designing the research. We write a proposal. The proposal gets approved, sometimes not, or most of the times not. Uh, we collect data, we analyze data. That I think is more straightforward to you. Peer review, publish and present, and then we can relax and come up with another idea. And that's kind of the, um, the process that you'll be following this semester. So these are some of the letters I've added late in the game. Uh, D, A, C and I, another I. So you've done this informally and I've done this teaching you informally and I want to formalize it this semester by getting you to explicitly work at defining questions, thinking about what it means to abstract so that you can do computations or calculations. And then you're going to compute answers. And, and by the way, this is just as valid for statistical thinking or mathematical thinking. And so this is, I've posted something in OneNote for you about this and um, you'll be able to, uh, th there's links and, and stuff provided there so you can, if you're interested in this idea, you can think about it a little bit more and read about it a little bit more. And again, you see a, a process. So there's a process in which you repeat, define, abstract, compute, interpret, define, abstract, compute, interpret, and so on and so on and so on. And the little infinity signs means you do it forever and ever and ever. Um, but that is going to be an important feature of this course. Now, what do we do? And what are the elements? And so these are the the, uh, the letters, the four C's that I came up with, two I's and a T. You're going to be curious. We want you to be curious about the world or about something in health sciences. When you're curious, so that you have an idea. You're sitting back relaxing and they go, oh. Then you need to classify. So classifying is the, the idea of abstraction. Once you start um, you start classifying objects, then you can count them. When you can count them, then you can quantify them, then you can create some sort of an abstract representation. And the same thing when you count, you count different things. And so you had touched on that a little bit in the Math 11, 12 course, the quantification or measurement, you, not just by counting individuals, but you can also count units and count units um, so measuring. And then we're also interested in quantitative inquiry. We're interested in controlling because if we're going to know that A causes B or that A is related to B, then what we really need to n control the situation so that we know that it's not something else, but it's just A that was doing the work. Induction. Induction is what research that's done when we're not really sure of the work that we're doing. And I, actually, the next slide is going to touch a little bit on inductive reasoning. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit more. Inference, you're going to do a lot of. So we're going to do non-inferential stats in this course and inferential. I'm not liking this red here. So I'm going to try to get the letters big. And theory is what we come up with once we do this. So induction is a kind of reasoning that you do when you're not really sure, when you're doing something for the first time, you're trying to figure it out. So you're looking around, you're in a sense feeling in the dark. 
and theory is what you come up with at the end about a group of people you say this and this will happen if you do the following. So we have a thinker here, so Rodin's thinker, and what is he thinking about? Oh my god, not again, it's COVID. So most of us are thinking and worrying about COVID and how it's going to play out. And as the figure in the sketch, um, it doesn't look very happy as most of us are kind of concerned about it. And that is kind of a good spur for um, inductive reasoning. So this is the name of a process by which we try to figure out what's going on when we're not, when it's something new. We have not dealt with COVID in particular before. We've dealt with plagues and we've dealt with um, other pandemics as a culture, as a society, but we have not done dealt with COVID before. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit scarier. It's a little bit, um, um, there's a lot of uncertainty around it. That we're, we're, so things we don't know. So we do it through observation. We collect data. We observe, we move from inductive reasoning to inferential reasoning. And oh, we have a couple of notes here at the bottom, sample and population. So that's what it has to do with. Typically, uh, it, again, informally, we're sp speaking about formal inferential reasoning. So it's a way of making predictions based on existing knowledge. So that's the general definition of it. And you can make predictions about the future or samples from sample to population. And so here's just a visualization. If you know that in a sample, the proportion of red is around just a little bit more than a quarter, then you can expect in a, in a population for that to be this. If So this is about the past and the future. This is what happened in the past. So you, uh, what would, how would you predict what's happening in the future? Well, at this point, you're kind of predicting things will go up, but that may or may not be true. And so a lot of us, especially people who follow the stock market, uh, they win or lose money because of bets about the future, making inferences. Curiosity. Curiosity. You'll see a bunch of visuals here that I came up with. So we use technologies when we're curious. So whether it's, oops, whether it's trying to see better, see the world better, trying to see the stars into the, this is a moon, uh, even though it doesn't look like it. These are my sketches. So Again, looking at a uh, microscope, looking at the tiny, tiny object, uh, like a, um, a virus or a, well, not a virus really, but a bacteria. Well, a virus through some really super strong um, microscopes and also listening. So that's something that's a big feature. So if you notice a lot of our research is based on visuals, 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 um, and not so much on listening. And so qualitative research you'll see next year um, is about more about listening. Classification, we classify into scientists have shown us the way. So when we have birds, that's a classification right away. But what makes a bird a bird? Are you sure? What makes a dolphin a dolphin? Is a dolphin a fish or is a dolphin a mammal? And so when we start uh, doing these classifications, we end up in the into the same kind of trouble that some of you experienced when you were thinking about a well-defined set. Uh, counting. So again, using the bird theme, we can count by measuring or we can count objects. And so this is an organization called FLAP, Fatal Light Awareness Program. And what they do every year is they go around in the city of Toronto and collect birds that have been disoriented by the bright lights of the city and they collect the dead birds and make a count of how many um, birds have not survived their trip through Toronto after surviving sometimes thousand, uh, thousands of kilometers of flight. Uh, so control again we want to, I mentioned that before we want to focus on phenomena of interest and so this is uh, this is a gauge. You may not be able to tell what that is. This is a canoe, so paddling a canoe. We want to canoe and, and take the boat into the direction we want to take it in, whatever it is. Um, and finally, another 
image of control is the experiment. And so we, some people will get sent. And so this person is getting sent to the control groups and the treatment group and so on. And so that's how it, it plays out in the research field. So again, the formalized procedures, you can see how design, uh, collecting data, um, analyzing data, all these are on, and how you take the idea into the design, that's going to be a really important part of the work that you're going to be doing in this semester. Statistics, sorry, and I'm going to jump back here. Is that what statistics is about? And I'm going to argue no. So it's about finding order and disorder. And so when you see this, is that order? I don't know. Uh, I would argue that it's not. Uh, so there's a difference between small s, so if you notice. So this is clever, small s. Uh, and capital S and we have they're both about formalized systems but the small s statistics and they're used interchangeably so I'm not going to um, pin you down on that but it comes from just basically keeping track of information so governments keep statistics about their citizens governments keep all kinds of statistics uh, but it's not the mathematical statistics that you're going to be introduced to a little bit at least get a little uh, taste of in this course. Um, so we want to distinguish between those. The mathematical statistics, so we're using mathematical modeling statistics, so formal statistics, versus the mathematics uh, involved statistics, which is really closer to arithmetic or one branch of uh, mathematics. And you can read those slides for yourselves. Uh, after the analysis, after the data analysis, which uh, statisticians help with, those statisticians are, do much more, uh, we come up with a theory. And so this is the interpretation. And if I'm going to jump back a little bit here, what I would call this is the computation, uh, I guess so because I compute numbers, whether it's small s or large s, that help me come up with a theory. Okay, and so this is the capital S. So it's a process that keeps happening. It's not just one study, you find that out and you're done. So keys to success in this course, so learn the terminology, get a competence, before comprehension. So get good at the, the terminology, do the exercises, even if you're feeling like, I don't really understand this yet. Do the exercises, make mistakes, through the making of the mistakes, you will learn. Uh, post stuff to OneNote, ask me questions, make mistakes, be wrong, be wrong, be wrong, be wrong, as many times as it takes until you get a solid foundation and you learn it then you won't be wrong anymore um, and be comfortable with being wrong I think that's an important part of this course as well practice with SPSS that technology any technology I hope you've gained that appreciation over the last four or five months that getting that uh, a handle on the technology will really really help you succeed in the course so you're going to be using SPSS software and read the assigned material and welcome thank you